Hello, Accounting Scholars! Welcome to Chapter 6, Section 2. So, we are going to begin our journey deep into this forest of budgeting and planning. And we're going to talk a little bit about how the revenue process planning is related to the balanced scorecard approach. So one of the things um, we've talked about in the past is the uh, is the balanced scorecard. Uh, and part of the balanced scorecard is the sales budget. Uh, the actual number of units uh, that are involved in the dollar amount that's expected. Um, you guys kind of, uh, you kind of, you guys kind of did this, uh, you know, in your revenue planning and your business plan. You know, as I uh, emphasized to you when I asked you for a sales forecast each month, I asked you to support that with the number of the actual number of units you were going to sell by product line the price of those units and the dollar amount. Uh, you know, from that, uh, you actually then generated a cash receipts schedule, which essentially comes from the cash flow that you created. You know, and, and you were doing your financial statements on a uh, accrual basis versus a cash basis. So your your income statement looked uh, looked very different than your cash flow because uh, you know basically you were buying uh, you were buying items on credit with a uh, net 45 day uh, payment term. So the ba that balanced score scorecard approach tying to the revenue process planning uh, uh, area was. Uh, very much what you did in the business planning process and is very much what you do in the budgeting plan planning process for revenue. Okay, let's talk about um, let's talk about the the sales budget and the cash receipts uh, and, the, and the cash receipts budget. Um, you know, in this particular in this particular area, um, you're going to be looking at things like uh, uh, how much cash is coming in and how much sales are occurring at each individual week, at each individual month, at each individual quarter, and then for the total year. Uh, typically, it's a very probably the most one of the most important parts of the budgeting process, uh, you know, because as as shown on this particular sh chart, the sales budget uh, drives a lot of the other costs, such as the production budget, how much you know, how many units you sell is going to determine how much direct material you need, how much direct labor you're going to need, how much overhead. It's also going to drive your cost of goods sold. Uh, which uh, you know, as you uh, as you remember when you put together your income statement in the uh, business plan, uh, and then that drives selling expense, administrative expense, budgeting income, and uh, and ultimately your your uh, your balance sheets and uh, capital uh, capital budgets. So. Uh, other things that will be generated from this particular, uh, from the revenue budget, are your accounts receivable uh, schedule and your marketing and distribution uh, schedule. Uh, accounts receivable, as you might remember, are the expected amounts of sales that are still owed the customer. You know, so if you sell something to a customer on credit. Um, he doesn't pay you or she doesn't pay you right away. Uh, she's going to pay you later. Very similar to what you did in the business plan when you bought items for your business, coffee business. You didn't have to pay 
for 45 days. So uh, for the companies like, let's say, Sam's Club that you bought coffee from, um, you, they are not going to get their money for 45 days. So they would view your uh, uh, expenditures as accounts receivable as opposed to uh, cash transactions. You know, similar to the uh, marketing and distribution budget, uh, the expected costs associated with uh, marketing and distributing the products are contained in this, in this budget. Uh, how much advertising uh, are you going to do? Uh, how are you going to distribute your products? Are you going to deliver those via UPS, via FedEx? Uh, what are the costs associated? Um, are these, you know, and this ties in the, again, the terms we've used in the past, uh, FOB shipping point, uh, you know, all those types of, uh, or, or FOB destination. So that will affect your, uh, your distribution, uh, your distribution costs. Okay. Uh, let's talk, let's move on to the conversion process. Uh, related to the balance scorecard approach. And so how is the conversion process, uh, you know, basically uh, implemented in the budget process, in the budgeting cycle that a company would go through each year? Well, uh, here again, the relationship uh, to the balance scorecard and the conversion planning process is primarily related to setting of goals and objectives for the conversion process. Companies have to develop measures in each of the perspectives to monitor conversion process activities. You know, and again, in the conversion process, that's where you make stuff, right? That's typically called the manufacturing production function. These, um, these, these costs and expenses that you plan for are ultimately reflected in the production budgets that are developed as part of the conversion process. Okay, let's uh, let's talk about um, what is the budget that results from the conversion and process uh, process planning. Uh, area. Well, there's a couple things that uh, that happen here, and um, one of them is the production budget. Uh, the production budget here again is very detailed, and you, uh, to some extent, uh, did this when you put together your cost of goods sold schedules. Uh, it really determines the number of units that you need to produce to meet the sales forecast, the revenue, uh, the revenue process uh, budgets uh, that you created in step one. Um, because if, you're, if your revenue process budget, your sales budgets are not in sync with your production budgets, you're going to waste a lot of resources or you're not gonna have a lot of resources available. Um, and that's really going to drive your finished goods inventory. You know, how many, how many things you actually make and keep in your inventory. And it depends heavily, um, on the, uh, on the inventory model adopted by the company. You know, you might remember we talked about, uh, just in time manufacturing, um, uh, in earlier, uh, in earlier sections of, of our book. Okay, let's talk about how the expenditure process planning uh, is related to the uh, balance scorecard approach. Well, there's really um, two areas uh, in terms of what is involved here. The balance scorecard approach basically set uh, says that you, you set goals and objectives uh, based on um, the sales, revenue uh, budgets, as well as the conversion budgets. You know, basically, 
how many units are we going to sell and how much stuff do we need to buy to make that happen? And the expenditure process is how much stuff do we need to buy to make the production and sales budgets happen? So uh, companies develop measures in each of the perspectives of to monitor, to monitor expenditure process activities. Uh, these activities are ultimately reflected in budgets and schedules that are developed as part of the expenditure process. Okay, so what are the what are the budgets that result from the expenditure process planning? Well, there are a couple of these, right? Uh, these involve the administrative budget. Uh, these involve the direct labor and manufacturing overhead budget. And, you know, basically these are the administrative budget are the expected costs of administrative activities for the period. The direct materials budget are the quantity and dollar amount of direct material purchase needed to meet the production and desired levels of ending direct materials inventory. Uh, you know, so here again, this is something that you did. Um, in the business planning process. Uh, you know, the direct labor and manufacturing overhead budget to some extent correlates with your cost of goods sold, uh, your cost of goods sold budget. Okay, um, so let's, uh, let's do one last, uh, last area uh, relating to the expenditure budgets. And that is uh, the direct material purchase budget. Uh, you know, similar to direct labor, direct materials is, as we mentioned earlier, is actually the quantity and dollar amount of direct materials purchase to meet the production needs. Um, if this isn't done correctly, uh, Companies will waste a lot of money if this budget is in, in sync with the sales forecast, with the production forecast. You're going to be buying a lot of stuff that you don't need, or you're not going to be buying enough stuff, and your factory is going to remain idle, and your ability to meet uh, the sales needs of your customers is going to suffer. So this is a very, very important part of the budget. All right, guys, uh, we're going to move on uh, to class tomorrow. Please take good notes. Uh, we'll probably uh, start out with a quiz on this uh, material from Section 2. Have a great night.